Here we are. Here's my tachometer. It says 70, uh, 70, 700. 750 RPM to dial. That's all right. Here's the car. Here's the radiator. And uh, here's our funnel. Fill it up with. Here it is. Um, I got sidetracked when I was originally filling this radiator up with uh, an alternator belt break. So, some episodes where it's gotten a little hot at the stoplight. So, well, not a stoplight, in a traffic jam. If you're just driving around town, ordinarily, without any uh, real delays, it's fine. It never it never moves off normal. But if you're in a traffic jam, where you back, maybe move 300 feet in five, ten minutes, it's going to overheat. Um, there's the sensor right there. DCT sensor that yellowish thing right there. I took it off and got a reading of uh, 1200 ohms resistance when it was cold. Now directly below this sensor, you can't really see it, but the, uh, there's another sensor for the temperature gauge right below that one. I didn't test that one because the only thing that gauge controls is you another know, you can kind of see it right here. That black sensor right underneath it, the yellow one. Oh, and how you get this off, you can see it in the clip, if you will. This little clip, you have to pull that off with a screwdriver. Now, because all this plastic's old and brittle and warm, it kind of fractured on me <laughs> when I took it out. But, you know, it's pretty expected. Ah, so it's holding at a steady idle of 750. Got this little tachometer, multimeter from uh, Harbor Freight. It's got a temperature probe too, somewhere in it. Might get dead out on it. Put it back in a few when it's warmed up a little bit more. Cable, you'll see what happens. It's about 2,000 RPM, approximately. So, that's pretty useful. We've got some sort of procedure that calls for us revving it up to a certain RPM. We use the tack to get close to that mode. Revving up, this isn't going down. This little pack is well worth the money to me anyway. As you can see, I got a little still dripping on the mouth there. That's what that little smoke is. Another job for another day. But in order to get that valve cover off, you have to take the distributor out of the car because there's a boat. Here underneath the distributor. All the others are very acceptable, except for that one, which they helpfully put underneath the distributor, so we have to take the entire distributor out of the car. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, alright. A little funnel. Things really warmed up. I'm revving it up to 2,000, 2,500, and then 3,000 RPM. The oil leak when it's all asleep, I'm not sure where it's going. But it's not leaking going. That's not moved. It hasn't moved one bit. It stayed right where it is. Oh, that little hose there. That thing going down to the heater. Uh, There's a uh, little fitting to put a hose on. <laughs> in order to bleed air out of the heater portion of the cooling system. So if you run this little hose up to here, 
and immerse it in the coolant and it blows bubbles up. I haven't seen maybe a couple of two, three little bubbles, that's about it. Let's see what the temp looks like. Alright, after all this, the temp gauge is right there, as you can see, right smack solid in the middle of uh, normal. I don't know if that's an accurate reading or not. I'm going to check the uh, resistance on the ECT again. I'm going to turn the motor off. This fan has never come on, not once. I've been revving this thing up to 3,000 RPMs. The fan has not come on once. It's early in the morning, well, you know, 10 o'clock. It's about 85 outside, it's summertime. It's not exactly blue blaze is hot, but it's, you know, hot enough. Uh, still, right dead in the middle of normal. So. Still puzzling about my, why my fan's not coming on. The car's been overheating in um, traffic jams, but nowhere else. And then when I get out of the traffic jam, it goes right back down to, you know, where you see it right there. I'll be back. We're back. Um, took the, this off again, tested the sensor. It was showing 225 ohms of resistance. Now, in general, when this gets hot, uh, the resistance goes down. So it was 1200 and some odd ohms of resistance. Now it's 200 and ohms of resistance. So that tells me it's going in the right direction. I don't know what the precise numbers are supposed to be. I'll have to look them up. But that's what I was getting. Now, I tested the other side of this. Uh, and the way I tested it was using uh, this. It's a logic probe. Looks like a test light, but it's not. It's got two leads, positive and negative. It has uh, little bulbs in there and some resistors. And what you do is you touch both sides of this. I don't know if I can do it one hand. Probably not, but I'll try. Demonstration. Yeah, there it is. One of the lights came on. I don't know if you can see that. There's a light on there. Then you touch the other one. There's a light on there too. That's supposedly that you know that there is a continuity between these two things. The circuit's not bad. A little bulb. Because of the glare, I can't really see it, I guess. It's down in there. Bulb down there. And it glows green or red. It shows you green, you know, that's brown. Red's positive. Uh, so it looks like the wiring's good. Wiring appears good. Sensor appears good. The car was extensively idled at 3000 RPMs and it didn't overheat. No bubbles came up in the funnel. Why didn't this fan come on? Surely to goodness it should have been triggered on. All this stuff I've been doing. But it didn't. It's a mystery. Still kicking that one around. Oh, by the way, I tested the fan with power to it, brick to it. it. It does come on if you put power right to it. And I checked the relay. Oh, it's actually in here. Checked all three relays. I have a video about that too. They went click. It showed continuity when the coil was energized on all three of them. So, coils are good. Fans getting power. That wiring checks out. So does the sensor. Why no fan? 